Nisar Ahmed Khan with the U.S. President Donald Trump's decertification of Iran nuclear deal, the prospects of peace and stability in the Middle East appear to be a distant dream. Largely seen as dangerously irresponsible act, Trump's policy decision has not only cast a dark shadow over peace and stability in the Middle East but has also escalated the ongoing tensions and conflicts among various competing forces whose interests diverge more than they converge on the complex geopolitical landscape of the Middle East. The 2015 Iran nuclear deal Our Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action JCPOA is a multilateral, international agreement negotiated between Iran and five permanent members of UN Security Council plus EU. The deal which lifted use led international sanctions in return for crippling limitations imposed on Iran's capabilities to acquire nuclear weapons is now under serious strain since U.S. President Donald Trump refused to recertify the deal on October 13, despite reluctantly doing so twice before. Trump has taken this decision in complete defiance of international community and the remaining signatories of the deal. Also, the endorsement of Iranian unwavering compliance with the deal by International Atomic Energy Commission IAEA that intrusively inspects Iran's nuclear program has no effect on Trump. Even some key policymakers in his own administration such as Rex Tillerson and Secretary of Defense James Mattis voiced for staying in the deal as long as it is working but Trump seems adamant in his approach and seeks options to tighten the news around Iran which he blames for promoting terrorism and destabilizing the region. So let's try to understand what led Donald Trump to take such an infamous decision what policy objectives does he want to achieve what will be Iran's response and finally how it affects regional security environment in the Middle East by now it should be clear that Trump decision has less to do with Iran's compliance with the deal per se and more so with Iran's regional activities. It seems that the decision is primarily aimed at restoring the waning credibility and supremacy of U.S. in shaping the outcomes and pleasing Washington's allies like Israel and Gulf countries including Saudi Arabia. These countries perceive Iran's growing presence in areas like Syria, Lebanon, Iraq and Yemen a blow to their strategic interests. Moreover, now that the Middle East is heading towards a post-Islamic state as era after the near-complete military defeat of IS, the U.S. is now looking determined to secure its interests vis-à-vis -vis Iran and its regional ally Russia. When it comes to Iraq, Iran has an upper hand which is not acceptable to U.S. and allies. Iraq's predominantly Shia government rebuffed a statement by U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in which he called on Iranian-backed forces to go home. Most importantly, Iran's missile program and missile tests is a thorn on the side of U.S. that he wants to contain. This combined with Iran's growing resurgence regionally has caused the mounting hostilities. Since assuming power and even during the election campaign Trump expressed his displeasure with Iran nuclear deal describing it the worst deal ever and an embarrassment to the U.S. that he will end. However, at least for now Donald Trump has stopped short of entirely walking away from the deal and has opened the window for Congress to come up with an improved version that should allay Donald Trump's primary concerns related to the sunset clauses of the deal and Iran's missile program. But the trouble is that Iran has already ruled out any possibility of renegotiating the deal and has rebuked Donald Trump for tinkering with international agreements protected by UN Security Council resolution. Trump's predicament is further compounded by the fact that Washington's key European allies have also vowed to protect the deal and have instead suggested that issues outside of the scope of the deal should be dealt separately. EU considers the deal as an important foreign policy achievement that serves the purpose of non-proliferation while demonstrating diplomacy and negations as the most viable and cost-effective methods of conflict resolution. Bolstered by this international support in favor of the deal, Iran is very unlikely to step back from its ballistic missile program that it argues and rightly so is out of the deal's scope. This will inevitably lead the two states into war with each other if a situation so arises. The U.S. has already imposed economic sanctions on various entities of Iran including its powerful paramilitary force IRGC thus making the situation precarious. In the worst-case scenario, if Trump administration fails to come up with an agreeable revised version of the deal and Iran resists U.S. pressures, the deal can find itself in a trash and economic sanctions lifted under the deal could be reimposed thereby potentially leading Iran to pursue nuclear capability if it so desires. This seems plausible given the fact that Russia and China and most probably EU will continue their economic relations with Iran. Thus, it can only be hoped that sense prevails and all stakeholders once again reconsider their respective stances and try to overcome their differences through negations and diplomacy since Middle East cannot afford further deterioration. 
It's time to rehabilitate and reconstruct the region for wandering refugees to return home and live a peaceful life. The writer is research affiliate at Strategic Vision Institute, a think tank based in Islamabad. Email email protected related.